Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And we thought it might be mostly sunny today. And then late this afternoon, we did see some blue sky and some sunshine. A beautiful shot looking down at the Wenatchee Valley from our Jump Off Ridge SkyFi Tower camera. And just to mid-screen off to your left, you can see Wenatchee Heights. And that's where our cross camera is located. Still plenty of snow around the area and snow is on the way even though we won't see a lot of it there is one system that's moving in tomorrow as you can see on our map maybe an inch of snow here in the Wenatchee area. The darker you get in colors, uh, the more snow that we, sh we should see. So most of the snow will stay to our south on Wednesday, and then another storm will move in late in the day Wednesday into Wednesday night, and that will bring us even a little bit more snow, and we'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on in your weather forecast. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. A 24-year-old man has been arrested for starting a fight at a Quincy bar, then firing two shots from a pistol in the parking lot. The condition of a six-year-old girl who fell into a Rock Island pond has been upgraded from critical to serious at Seattle's Children's Hospital. And despite the challenges of a snowy February, Pangborn Memorial Airport did not have any flights into East Wenatchee canceled because of weather. But first we begin tonight, an 18-year-old man has been arrested for an online threat that led to a lockdown of Kashmir High School last Friday morning. Gerardo Tovar Medina of Wenatchee is accused of posting, quote, I was planning on shooting up the school, unquote, on a YouTube video about the school. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office said a search of Tovar Medina's home turned up drawings and notes indicating he had done research on past mass shootings and was, quote, planning or had had a desire to commit a mass shooting at Kashmir High School, unquote. Tovar Medina was booked for threats to bomb or injure property. A 24-year-old man has been arrested for starting a fight at a Quincy bar, then firing two shots from a pistol in the parking lot. There were no injuries. At about 1.30 a.m. on Saturday, Quincy police officers responded to reports of gunfire outside Tiki's Bar and Grill. That's located at 812 Central Avenue. Shortly after, they spotted the vehicle being driven by the shooting suspect and arrested the driver, Manuel Garcia Pacheco, on several charges, including assault, aiming a firearm at another person, and driving with a suspected license, suspended rather license. Police said witnesses reported Pacheco was first denied entrance to the bar with a concealed firearm. He reportedly took the gun to his vehicle, then was allowed inside. At some point, Mr. Pacheco was involved in an altercation inside and then was escorted outside by security where he went to a vehicle and retrieved the firearm from earlier. Witnesses stated they observed Mr. Pacheco fire at least two times in the air and then left the scene. During a search of Pacheco's 2018 Ford F-150 pickup, police said they found a 380 pistol. He later was booked into the Grant County Jail. Well, the condition of a six-year-old girl who fell into a Rock Island pond has been upgraded from critical to serious at Seattle Children's Hospital as she continues her recovery for more than 15 minutes in the icy pond last Thursday. Sean Ballard of Ballard Ambulance said the girl, who's not yet been identified, showed good improvement on Monday. Yes, I spoke with the mom last night over at Children's, and uh, in general, she said she had a much better day yesterday than the day before. Sounds like the day before was pretty rough. Um, but uh, yesterday she rested well, her lungs were clearing up a little bit, and um, they moved her uh, condition from critical down to serious. And so just, you know, kind of slow, steady progress. Um, you know, obviously anytime you have something like this, uh, you know, it, it takes a while to recover. It's not just an instant recovery. And so, but everything so far is slow progress in the positive uh, way. Ballard said he expects details to be released soon on a fundraising effort to help the girl and her family with the expenses associated with that accident. Well, despite the challenges of a snowy February, Pangborn Memorial Airport did not have any flights into East Wenatchee canceled because of the condition of its runway. That's what airport officials reported yesterday. There were 12 flights between Pangborn and Seattle. 
canceled, but 10 of those were because of conditions at SeaTac and two because of poor visibility at Pangborn. Airport Governing Board President Jim Huffman credited hard work by Pangborn staff, investments in snow removal equipment, and efforts by Horizon Air to avoid cancellations whenever possible. Coming up next, the Wenatchee School Board will be looking at some tough options tonight in dealing with the district budget deficit in excess of $5 million. We'll get a legislative update from Senator Brad Hawkins. And in an announcement yesterday, Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort is going to do something next season they haven't done in 20 years. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Since 1932, Camp Zuniga, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Zuniga's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Zuniga today, www.campfirencw.org. Antique Mall at Cashmere wishes you a happy and prosperous new year. With 15,000 square feet to explore, Antique Mall at Cashmere has something for everyone. For repurposing projects, do-it-yourselfers, and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh, and new again, this is the place to find your next project. Antique Mall at Cashmere, their friendly staff is here to help you. Stop on by today. Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house featuring great family dining in downtown Chelan. We've got burgers, pub fare, and the best barbecue around. Try one of our award-winning sauces made fresh here in-house. So grab the whole gang and come on down. Stormy Mountain Brewing. Beer, barbecue, friends, and beer. Welcome back. In another news, the Wenatchee School Board will be looking at some tough options tonight in dealing with a district budget deficit in excess of $5 million. At a February 12th meeting, Superintendent Brian Flonis was asked to restore some of the cuts the administration had proposed. Those included a half-time middle school counselor, half-time librarian at the high school, mariachi jazz festival support, and kindergarten art. The administration had proposed cutting $100,000 from the athletics budget, but the board wanted to double that, in addition to looking at pay-to-play options. Flona said cutting another $100,000 from the athletics will have, quote, detrimental impact on individual sports and student participation and needs input from coaches, students, and parents, unquote. The board meeting begins at 6 p.m. Several bills of high interest locally are making their way through the Washington legislature, including a ban on single-use plastic bags, a mandatory sex education curriculum, and uh, fighting, fighting rather vaccine requirements. 12th District Senator Brad Hawkins discussed those bills with NCW Life this afternoon. There's a few different bills that I believe will have has already generated significant conversation across the state and in our district. The plastic bag bill, of course, is one of them, but we just briefed a bill that came out of the Senate Education Committee uh, related to comprehensive statewide sex education in our schools. And uh, one of my Democratic colleagues is proposing mandating comprehensive sex education uh, across the state and, re and requiring the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction to develop curriculum statewide and then making it mandatory for all 295 school districts in the state to uh, implement that sex education. So that uh, I think is going to be a real interesting debate and discussion as it comes before the Senate, uh, the Senate floor. We also have received a significant amount of communications related to a vaccine bill. You probably heard about the measles outbreak in Southwest Washington and Clark County. It's starting to spread to King County. 
but Washington State is one of 18 states uh, in the United States that allows a personal exemption for vaccines in addition to a religious exemption. Um, and there have been many, many stakeholders and parents that have concerns about the state forcing them to vaccinate their children. But I also hear from healthcare practitioners about the importance of having a high vaccination rate in the community. In an announcement yesterday, Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort is going to do something next season they haven't done in 20 years. I have a really exciting announcement for everyone. Uh, we're gonna roll with seven days a week starting mid-December through February next season. Um, this will be the first time in 20 years that we've gone to a seven day a week schedule. Uh, so with that, March 7th is the season's pass sale and you can go onto our website if you have any further questions or give us a call. And I hope to see you on Mission Ridge, by the way, has had 70 inches of snow just this month. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Everything we do is about delivering very high quality care and keeping our patients safe. We really work as a team here and so that's really what makes it worthwhile. I give 100% every day and I do that because I work for a company that I believe gives 100% back to me. The bottom line is we genuinely care about our employees. It is the most incredible place to work and you will be inspired every day. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. When you have to get there on time and looking good, call Fast Friendly Reliable AC Checker 663 Taxi. Available 24 7, AC Checker Taxi has the industry's only on time or it's free guarantee for your pre booked call. Some conditions apply. Call 663 8294. AC Checker 663 Taxi. Schedule your ride ASAP or book up to a year in advance online at acchecker.com. American Classic Checker Taxi 663 Taxi. That's 663 8294. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. For the rest of this week on the NCW Life Evening News, we'll feature segments of the upcoming NCW Magazine that takes a deeper look at the Haran House and how the property now faces demolition. Tonight, NCW Life's Caitlin Hedersheet gives us the history behind the historic home. The Michael Horan House is a two and a half story wood frame Victorian residence constructed in 1899 on the north side of the Wenatchee River, settled near the confluence of the Columbia. According to the National Register of Historic Places, the property is one of the best preserved Victorian residences in the region. While not many of the original artifacts of the home remain, the interior of the Haran House features a typical Victorian floor plan, with areas of the home remodeled to accommodate the restaurant located at the house since the 1980s. The Michael Haran House is historically significant for its association with a pioneer Wenatchee Valley rancher, orchardist, businessman, and civic leader. Haran, who lived in the valley in 1889, established the town's first butcher shop, helped to form the first bank, developed a leading livestock ranch and orchard, served on the initial and subsequent city councils, and was named the first National Apple King. Born in Stockbridge, Massachusetts in 1854, Haran traveled west in 1876 after his Irish immigrant parents died. Haran moved to the region from California in 1884, establishing a butcher shop in Roslyn and marrying his wife Margaret Rankin of Glielum in 1888. By that time, the town of Wenatchee had been laid out along today's Miller Avenue. Arriving in 1889, Mike and Margaret Haran were the 12th family and the meat market Haran opened was the fifth commercial enterprise in town. 
In the 1890s, the promise of a rail connection set off a boom in the region. According to a local historian who knew him, Haran was, quote, in on the planning of most of all the principal developments in early Wenatchee, unquote, during these formative years. In 1890, he was elected Kittitas County Commissioner, served as a county school director for many years, founded and was an original trustee of the town's first fraternal organization, the Junior Order of United American Mechanics. In March of 1892, Haran was elected chairman of a large public rally that voted to exclude Chinese from the Wenatchee area by, quote, honorable, legal, and lawful means, unquote. At the meeting, Haran was put in charge of implementing exclusion plans and stood his ground when questioned. In December of 1892, shortly after the city was incorporated, voters elected Haran to the town's first city council. In addition to his political involvement, Haran had a varied business career in Wenatchee. For the first few years, the Harans lived in the Miller Log Cabin until the Haran House was completed at the turn of the century. Haran's business expanded to fruit growing with a 23-acre orchard, and his pear orchard was considered the largest in the valley at the time. Haran helped organize and serve as a president of the Washington State Horticultural Association in 1901, with the valley following Haran's lead in orchard practices. Mike Haran died in 1919, with more than 800 mourners attending his funeral at the Masonic Temple and over 50 floral displays placed at his grave. Following Haran's death, the house and ranch were owned by his sons John and Walter. John Haran remained actively involved in orchard operations, as did his children and grandchildren. Walt Haran went on to serve as a U.S. congressman. The Haran House was included on the National Register of Historic Places in the 1990s. Time now for a check of your north central Washington weather forecast. Before we get into those details, let's take a peek outside our weather window and a beautiful shot from Jump Off Ridge just above Wenatchee Heights. And thank you to SkyFi for the tower camera and this beautiful shot of the Wenatchee Valley. We are drenched in white right now. We've had a lot of snow since uh, the 1st of December. Most of that, in fact, almost all of that coming in the month of uh, February. And we do have more to tell you about. We'll get to that in a second high temperatures today we just cannot shake this cold weather still well below where we should be for this time of year can you believe it 46 degrees is now our normal high temperature i looked last year on this date we were at 47 degrees 25 unofficially our high temperature this afternoon 16 a chilly start to our day 30 degrees is our normal low temperature right now 60 our record high that was set back in 1968 and our record low for the second day in a row was in 19 93 at 5 degrees above zero. So far, no precipitation, but that will change as we move into tomorrow. We saw snowfall to date still at 20.6. That too could change as we get into tomorrow and especially by Thursday morning. Sunrise this morning was at 647. Sunsets at 541. Now let's take a peek at that surface loop. Lots to get to over the next at least a couple of days here. Tonight at 10 o'clock, we'll see partly cloudy skies. We'll see a bit of a northwest breeze. Cold air still funneling down. Two weather systems causing the snow right now. This area of low pressure and this area of high pressure that's dragging all of that cold air into north central Washington. And then by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, we will have a chance for snow, about a 50% chance for it. It will be moving up from the south. I don't even know if it's going to get that far north. The line is just about Highway 2 and above I-90, so we'll see how much we pick up on Wednesday. But by 8 p.m., a little better better chance for snow for us here in the Wenatchee area. A 60 to 70 percent chance for snow on Wednesday night. As we get into Thursday, most of the snow showers we see Thursday will be in the morning, but by the time we make that morning commute, we can see another one to three inches of snow on the ground for Thursday. And then things stabilize once again as we get into the end of the week and move into the upcoming weekend. Not much to tell you about as far as clouds on Friday, but we will stay unseasonably cold on Friday. Still cold with mostly sunny skies on Saturday. You can see these isobars packed very tightly together and coming down and dropping down a trough just below Washington. That allows that cold air to move in from the Yukon for Sunday at 1 o'clock. Still lots of sunshine for our weekend, but still continued cool. We'll see sunny skies. Most of the cloudiness will stay offshore 
uh, off the Washington, Oregon coast before that moves in later on uh, next week when we will see temperatures maybe moderating by the mid and end of next week. Boy, we're all waiting for that, aren't we? Let's take a look now at your quick lube and tune forca forecast. 14 degrees are overnight low tonight, so I really think tonight if we do see those clear skies, we will be cooler tonight than last night. 30 degrees our high temperature for tomorrow. A 50 to 60 percent chance for snow throughout the day. A better chance Wednesday night. Still some lingering snow in the morning on Thursday and then just mostly cloudy skies by afternoon and 33 degrees. 32 your high temperature on Friday with mostly sunny skies. We'll stay cool on Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures in the upper 20s to around 30 and by Monday to kick off our next work week more of the same. Mostly sunny skies and cool with high temperatures then around 30 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. I'm working today. I have got some work to do today. Don't forget, I've got some work for you today. Good first day at work, Mom. Thanks. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in our community. New beginnings feel great, don't they? Yes, they do. Be a job creator. Goodwill. There's more behind the store. me. If you're watching me and you are a business owner in North Central Washington, your potential customers could be seeing your TV commercial right now. With Solely on Broadcasting, TV advertising is effective and affordable. Place your ads on the network best suited to your potential customers or get top of mind awareness with 16 cable networks including NCW Life, your local TV channel. Give Solely on Broadcasting a call at 888-2020 today to see how easy and affordable it is to advertise on TV. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. Hi, everybody. Dan Coons filling in for Eric. I just bought a boat, Grandstrom, and a good Tuesday afternoon to you. Sports Gonzaga is back atop the AP College basketball poll following Duke's loss last week and the fact that Gonzaga keeps right on winning. AP top 25 and the coaches poll both put Gonzaga at number one. Virginia number two, Duke number three, Kentucky number four, North Carolina rounds out the top five. At number five, GU has games at Pacific Thursday, and then Saturday they'll take on St. Mary's. Both of those games televised on ESPN. By the way, the Washington Huskies check in at number 25 on the AP poll. Well, former Seahawks quarterback and NFL head coach Jim Zorn introduced yesterday as the new head coach and general manager of the XFL franchise in Seattle, doing the honors at CenturyLink Field, which is where this team will play uh, football come next year. League president and CEO Oliver Luck. I watched Jim Zorn play for the Seahawks, an expansion franchise. I was totally captivated with his style of play. He was innovative. He was creative. Uh, he did all those things as a player that we want to do as a league. He's the last person that needs to be introduced to the people of Seattle. You all know Jim. You've adopted him. You love Jim Zorn, and, and we do as well. So I would like to, to ask you all to uh, help me give a warm perspective Pacific Northwest welcome to the new head coach of the Seattle XFL team, Jim Zorn. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. I want to uh, uh, thank all 
Oliver for introducing me. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, I, I've accepted the position here is because he said that he had a son named Andrew Luck, and we have the first shot at him, I think. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that what you said? Oh, okay. Well, no, I'm really excited about, <laughs> about being here, and uh, Andrew and I go back a long way in that uh, we were on v different teams in the NFL, uh, kind of the same, same era. And when he called me uh, and, and asked me if I'd be interested in, the, in this league, he mentioned the name Vince McMahon, and I went, uh, isn't he the guy a long time? And he's going, yeah. But uh, as he explained it uh, and what Vince's vision was and what his vision was together uh, for the future of the XFL, I got excited because it's going to be real football. Uh, we're going to have real names on the back of jerseys. Uh, and uh, it's also going to be a, a bit creative. I think each head coach is going to have to really think through, and this is what I'm, one of the things that I'm most excited about, thinking through what it's going to be like to have a few little tweaks when it comes to the clock, uh, when it comes to getting the ball ready for play, when it comes to uh, what we can do both uh, offensively, offensively and defensively with players who uh, may not have had this, uh, the opportunity that they've wanted to try to get uh, to a professional level. The XFL begins play in Seattle and all over the country in just about a year from now. Different kind of rules in the XFL. For one thing, they have a running clock except for the last couple of minutes of the half and of the game. If you are receiving the punt, you get a five-yard halo. You can't fair catch punts. And the most interesting thing is this tiered extra point system. After you score a touchdown, you can go for one, you can go for two, you can go for three. Of course, Vince McMahon is in charge of the XFL. He hopes that the XFL will reach fans who, quite frankly, don't much care for what the NFL has to offer nowadays. When HUL continue to prepare for their defense of the BCHL title, they get going this weekend at the Town Toyota Center. It's a best of seven series, West Kelowna. Saturday, Town Toyota Center. They'll drop the puck at uh, seven o'clock Saturday, then six o'clock, six o'clock, on Sunday, games three and four and five, if they have to play game five, will be in West Kelowna. That'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. If the series returns to Wenatchee, game six, Sunday, March 10th, game seven, Monday, March 11th. By the way, Arch Ecker will be my guest on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on Friday. Those are just some of the games that people are playing. Grant, back to you. Dan, thank you. And just a reminder before we let you go tonight, if you have a video of the day that you'd like to see right here on the NCW Life News, message us on our Facebook page at the NCW Life Channel. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with your host, Dan Koontz. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great night night. CW Life Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita Mocha with Whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the Mocha Frappitas. A peach Red Bull. Yes, we are live from Studio 2. I am Dan Koontz. This is Wake Up 
Wenatchee Valley. We got news, we got sports, we got weather, we got obscure holiday today in history, birthdays. Tom Potter joins me in studio. How are you? And Rod Cool is my guest today. The expert <laughs> is on your. We're broadcasting live from Studio 4, from Studio 2, Studio 7 here in downtown Wenatchee. Time for the obscure holiday of the day. Your dog to work day. Beautician's day. It's National Selfie Day. And in honor of National Selfie Day, I'm going to take a picture of myself. Wake up Wenatchee Valley. Mornings at 7 o'clock on the NCW Live channel. I'm Jenny Kerstetter, and you are watching the NCW Life Channel.